When I was a kid, having internet time was a rare privilege. If I was only allowed an hour or two on the World Wide Web, I had to carefully calculate the optimal way to use it. And in the early 2000s, internet browser games were the talk of the playground. Miniclip, Cool Math Games, The Impossible Quiz, Club Penguin, these games were all pretty cool. But there was one game that was more fun than all the rest. Even more fun than Heli Attack 3. And that was RuneScape. RuneScape felt like an impossible technical masterpiece, with hundreds of players running around a giant map, training different skills, fighting, woodcutting, fishing, all while talking to each other like it was one giant internet chat room. Keep in mind, this is the era before social media was big, when MSN was the best way of rizzing your year 7 crush by sending them a bunch of terrible emoticons. But RuneScape was all just from your browser, just from a web page. There was no purchase, there was no download. You could play it from anywhere, as long as you were willing to wait for it to take forever to load. Luckily, the title screen theme is a banger. Sure, there may have been more technically impressive MMOs out already at the time, but none of them captured such a huge general audience just by being so accessible. And I loved this game. Any free moment on the internet, and I would play it. Fishing, fighting, woodcutting, mining, I would do it all. And over a long time, I built up to having the best weapons and armor in the game. I felt like a pro, but there was something that I never got to do. Occasionally, strange players would walk through our world in weird looking armor, holding blood red swords, dropping extremely valuable items like they were nothing for us seagulls to just swarm over. These people were members. You see, RuneScape has two types of world free to play and members only. If you thought the free to play map was big, the members world is like a huge unexplored galaxy. They had more items, armor, weapons, upgrades, skills, just a bigger and better game. There were even entire skill trees locked behind being a member that just looked so cool to me. Hunting, slaying, thieving, agility. I remember seeing all these items you'd see in the skills menu and just being eternally tormented by those cursed words, members only. But being a kid with no cash, let alone a credit card to buy things online, being a member was something that young Peter could only dream of. I just remember wanting to be a member so badly, and if I ever got to go on a play date to my friend's house, who happened to be a member, it was such a treat being able to see all the crazy things that you could get up to. But then 2008 struck, and I went to high school, and RuneScape just stopped being cool. In fact, it started being extremely uncool. I specifically remember mentioning it to a friend on the bus on the way to school one time, and he like aggressively shushed me so that nobody else on this bus found out that he actually still played it. So I got older and RuneScape faded into the back of my memory. It got lots of updates and it's now basically unrecognizable from its past self. So I wrote it off and I moved on. But the developers didn't move on. They knew they had something special, something that hits millions and millions of people right in the nostalgia. So they made a bold move and re-released the game in 2013 in the state that it was in 2007, complete with terrible graphics. So I heard about this and I thought, huh, that's cool. And then I thought, wait a minute, I'm an adult now. Nobody can tell me not to have dessert before dinner. Nobody can tell me not to stay up past my bedtime, and nobody can tell me that I can't spend $16 on an old school RuneScape membership. So I decided to set out and find out what it's like to be a RuneScape member in 2023 for the first time. Now you might be thinking, Peter, you're, you're holding on to your childhood. This game just reminds you of a simpler time in life, when the biggest thing you had to worry about was where you're going to have your next birthday party because I only get to have a birthday party every two years because my sister has one every other year and I really like laser tag but now I'm going to get invite girls to my birthday party because it's like year seven and I'm getting older. Do girls like laser tag? What are girls like? Do they like anything? I'm really confused. And yeah, you might be right. But honestly, if this game is just replacing the time I'd be playing, you know, Overwatch 2 competitive and getting salty at my four teammates who act like they're toddlers trying to kill themselves while I'm playing support. Bruh, I don't know about that charge, buddy. Fucking idiot. Then maybe that's not such a bad thing. So I bought my membership and I logged in. And the first thing I noticed, which you've probably noticed already in this video, is of course the graphics. Are the graphics incredibly dated? Yes. 
Are the characters' heads moving when you talk to them? Really scary? Yes. Do I hate the look of this game? No. It's probably the nostalgia speaking, but I do think that this game has a lot of visual charm. So many games nowadays with the same engine and the same graphics power and all that, they start to all look the same because there only is one reality. As games approach reality, they all approach the same thing. Now, does this RuneScape man look like a man? No. But he does look like a RuneScape man. He's iconic, and I think it's incredibly impressive how many incredibly iconic pictures they've made when they had like 10 pixels to work with. You know, the Rune Scimitar, like a gold trim black kite shield, the raw shrimp. Okay, these, these ones do look shit, but it's an iconic shit. I'm never gonna say that this is the prettiest game ever made, but look at this lion. It's funny. It's iconic, and I think a lot of people are going to be super nostalgic because of this style. So I get to playing, and after a pretty short tutorial, I just get let go. You're free to walk in any direction and do whatever you want. If you never want to kill a single monster and just chop trees until you're the max level, you can do that. If you want to wander off into the wilderness and get killed by someone with 2,000 hours in the game, then yeah, go for it. It's kind of nice to not have your hand held at all. A sense of discovery is something that we don't really get in games anymore. Now that you have like a complete guide coming out a week before the game is released and super intense handheld tutorials, it's good to just be let go. I took the time to just go have some little adventures to my old favorite spots from the game. Yep, still plenty of people fishing here, lots of people woodcutting here, lots of people spamming the same message of trying to sell something at the Grand Exchange. It's nice, but with that said, Freedom has become a double-edged sword. I don't know how to use my limited free time optimally anymore. When I was a kid, I had plenty of time, so I'd just walk around and wander around and just discover things. But now, I might only have one free day a week, or a, an hour or two on a work day. And when I did get on one of the game's many quests, the lack of hand-holding went from kind of refreshing to just really annoying. Some of the ways to progress these quests are so strange that I refuse to believe that a single person in the world has done these without looking at the wiki. Like, you've got to find some cheese to then attract a mouse and you've used a magnet on it to... so you can open the door to get a ball over the fence from a witch. It's pretty whack. You know, maybe I'm a baby and I've been spoiled by modern games and their quest markers and their little hand-holding steps. But all the quests did just kind of feel like glorified yet confusing scavenger hunts. But RuneScape is a game where you set your own goals more than anything else. Maybe you want to equip a new sword. To get that sword, you need to complete a quest. To complete that quest, you need to upgrade your fishing level. To upgrade your fishing level, you need to do a mini quest to access the spot to best upgrade your fishing level, and so on and so forth. So if leveling your skills is the meat of this game, then what is this gameplay like? Well, for woodcutting, you click on a tree, and you wait, and you get the logs. Okay, okay, I mean, it's wood cutting. How, how interesting can it be? What about fishing? You, you click the fishing spot, and you wait, and you get the fish. What about mining? You click a rock, you wait, and then you get the ore. <laughs> but I mean, these skills, they're pretty much just medieval peasant simulator. What about the exciting ones? What about fighting? What about the combat leveling? To level up attack, you click on an enemy, and you wait. To level up defense, you click the defense button, and then you click an enemy, and then you wait. Y you get my point, it's, it's, it's not exciting. But that wasn't really the part that surprised me the most. What surprised me the most is how much of a long grind this game can be. The end goal of leveling up a skill is getting it to level 99. The absolute pinnacle of a skill and a feat to be extremely proud of. When I was a kid, the best weapon in the game was a rune scimitar. You could equip this at level 40. I remember making my ways up through the tiers of weapon and finally getting to level 40 where I could equip the strongest weapon in free to play and I was extremely proud of this feat. To get to level 40, you need 37,224 experience. To get to level 99, you need to get 13 million. 
that is more than 350 times more experience than it takes to get to level 40. Now, of course, you get experience a lot faster because you're dealing more damage with your new weapons, but you get the picture, getting to 99 is an absolute mission. I did a bit of research and I found that to get to skill to 99, it's gonna take anywhere between maybe 50 and like 200 hours, depending on how much in-game money you're gonna spend. And to get this in-game money, of course, it's gonna take you a lot of time as well. So that's just more grinding. And what do you do in this 50 to 200 hours? You click on the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. Now, if you're a RuneScape or probably any MMO player, I imagine this is not surprising at all to you, but I personally, as an MMO virgin, was absolutely shocked by how much hours people were willing to sink into this game when the gameplay is so slow. It's funny and ironic because RuneScape players will basically do almost anything in order to play the game less. In these leveling up skills guides, they talk about how AFKable a skill is, as in how few inputs you need to do to complete it, and how that's such an important part of how you level up. People will actually fight in the in-game chat over the best spots where the most crabs will attack you, so that you only have to do it at input every 10 minutes while you're grinding your combat experience. Click intensive tasks and one where you use the mouse a lot are seen as a bad thing and you'll pretty much do anything to avoid it. People have even worked out ways where you can position your camera in a certain way that you don't have to move your mouse at all. So you can just grab a wireless mouse, take it with you, maybe sit on the couch, watch TV while you're spam clicking. And the reward for leveling up is usually access to a new way of leveling up a different skill. So in case you hadn't really gathered, you should probably be doing something else while you're playing, like watching TV or a YouTube video or whatever. What's going on guys? My name's Theowatrix and welcome to my complete beginner's barbarian assault guide. So would I say that this gameplay is bad? Confusingly, it's so boring that it actually comes full circle around back to being good. You can actually get things done while you're playing. While I was writing the script for this video, I was playing! For people with short attention spans, and especially people with ADHD, this might be a great little thing to do if you find it hard to just sit down and watch a TV show without doing something else at the same time. Now, to be fair, in the later game, there is a lot more involved battles with bosses and raids, and stuff where you need to, you know, change your armor during the fight, change weapons, move your character around, manage your food, you know, change your defensive prayers. But in the month of playing that I did, I didn't get anywhere near the level required to do these things, so it's really far off. I did get to the point where I was doing this thing called prayer flicking, where you turn on your defensive powers only while the opponent's hitting you to save my resources, and that did feel pretty cool, but only a little bit. And it also feels like a little bit of a strange decision to make your combat XP based off how much damage you do and not off what you actually kill. Like, I could walk out into the wilderness, where other players can kill me and steal my items and kill this level 252 Lava Dragon, or I could just kill a level 3 cow. And I'd probably get more XP for killing the cows because they have lower defense, so my DPS is higher. It's just a bit strange seeing level 100s trading at the same place as level 3s, but anyway, I'll move on. Now, I haven't yet talked about these members-only skills. I knew these skills were going to be really fun because they're behind a paywall. They have to be better, right? Slay is a skill where you get bounties for certain unique monsters that you can't kill any other way. And they're usually in especially challenging and hard to reach spots. I took my first Slayer task and I was tasked with killing Hill Giants. 111 Hill Giants. This skill is just more clicking and waiting and it takes forever. Okay, what about agility? I used to see these shortcuts across the map that members could use if their agility level was high enough. So how do you level up your agility? Well, you do an obstacle course. Cool. To do the obstacle course, you click on each obstacle. Okay, what do you do when you finish the obstacle course? You, you do it again. And again. And again. So I did 50 laps of this course to get 25 agility. And then I looked at a guide and to get from 60 to 72 agility, you need to do 1,098 laps of a different course. Keep in mind that this was the most optimal way to level up your agility, meaning there's no faster way than 1,098 laps of this other course. And I read the comments on this guide and it was just everyone saying how much they hate agility. <laughs> Another one that was quite disappointing was thieving. 
I remember clicking on a man when I was a kid and seeing the option to pickpocket them pop up. And if you clicked on it, it would just say, this is members only. There was all these like fruit stalls and bakeries and other shops you could steal from. And it really seemed super exciting. In reality, thieving is not only boring, but it also nets you so little money that most people will just drop all the items they're stealing because it's just not worth even taking it to the bank. These member skills are no different to the free to play skills. I don't know what I expected. I guess it's just some of my old childhood optimism being held on. But yeah, I was wrong. Never meet your heroes, guys. It's not worth it. These member skills definitely open up the game for many different playstyles and many different ways of making money. But I just thought they'd be more exciting. But I, again, I think that's more on me than anything else. But enough about the skills. It's an MMO. What did I expect? I want to talk about the community of this game. There's something strange and yet very special about the community of games that have been around for a very, very long time. If you play TF2 today, which came out in 2007, it's very common occurrence for someone to kill you and then blow up their own character just to give you a funny kill cam. People play these games for so long that they just uh, stop giving a fuck about anything that happens. And I feel that with RuneScape. People will get like a super rare drop worth millions of in-game coins, and they'll just be like, eh, okay. Because in the last 15 years, they have got the same drop 10 times already. I was out in the wilderness in the PvP zone, and this guy who was about to kill me took pity on me, froze me in place, traded me to give me food to heal myself, and then said sorry and left. I was chopping down trees and I leveled up so I could equip the next level of axe, and someone just gave it to me instead of me traveling all the way home to get it. <laughs> Why not? These people playing the game are all just collectively not giving a shit, and I am absolutely here for it. I roleplayed as an Italian chef at the Grand Exchange, telling people how good the pizza I was selling is, when it's worth 800 gold, and someone just came up to buy it off me for 100,000. And then someone bought it from me for 10,000, and they stood next to me and ate it on the spot, and then just told me how good it was. <laughs> It's, it's unique, it's so much fun, and I gotta say, this is one of my favorite parts about the game. Sure, there are definitely people who take it very seriously, and they get sweaty with their PvP and their clans, but I think there's just a general understanding here that none of it really matters. We're all just here to blow off some steam and have some fun, and it's really nice to just have some light-hearted conversation about how your day was with some random people while you're all just chopping down the same tree. So, with the community aside, I've said that the quests are boring, the gameplay is repetitive and it takes forever to do anything. So the game must not hold up, right? Yet I just kept playing. There's something so strangely addictive to just slowly chipping away at that XP bar. There's just so many little things to look forward to. A new spell to cast, a new fish to catch, a new ore to mine. I can see why people just sink thousands and thousands of hours into their character, because there's always something else to do. RuneScape is a strangely addictive time sink, where before you even know you're into the game, you've installed it on your phone and you're training agility while you're watching TV. It's not easy to describe, but it's just nice to have a constant, easy to follow, and measurable progression. In Overwatch, I'll win some games, I'll lose some games, I might rank up if I'm lucky, but I don't really know if I'm getting any better at the game. In RuneScape, the only way is up. It's 0% stressful 99% of the time, and you can do it while you're doing pretty much anything else. Old school RuneScape is just a distraction, and in an age where everything has to be a, a skill-based matchmaking sweat fest with a competitive mode, it's kind of nice. So would I recommend that you go and start playing old school RuneScape? Well, no. In the thousands of hours that this game expects you to invest, you could probably be doing a lot more productive things. But if you remember this from when you're young, I would recommend jumping on just for nostalgia's sake. Go walk from Lumbridge to Varrock. Go get shot by a dark wizard. Go chop some trees at Draenor Village. Go forget the 10 gold you need to pass through the Alcarid Gate. And then uninstall the game before it steals your entire life away from you. Now, just before the video ends, I need to give a quick shout out to all the RuneScape content creators. The YouTubers for this game are unbelievably good. The effort they go to and the time that they spend on every single video is extremely inspiring and impressive. These people will have hundreds of hours of gameplay to make a single 15 minute really cut down and really well edited video. It's crazy to see these videos with so much love put into them, 
only getting a few hundred thousand views, where if they were made for like a really popular game, it would easily have millions. But it does just go to show that these people have so much love for their ancient game. Even though I'm probably going to stop playing RuneScape after this quick foray, I think I'm going to keep up with some of the YouTubers, which is a huge compliment to their work. Well, that's old school RuneScape. I hope you enjoyed this trip down memory lane as much as I enjoyed playing it for the month. This video took me quite a while to make, so I hope you enjoyed. Leave a like if you did. Peace.